In this lesson, I want to talk about the theory of how to approach necessary assumption questions, and、uh, in subsequent lessons, we'll look at some actual necessary assumption questions, and that'll wrap up our strengthening superset of questions. Right, so recall, in the strengthening superset, we looked at sufficient assumption questions. We looked at pseudo sufficient assumption questions, which are almost like sufficient assumption questions. Now we're going to look at necessary assumption questions, right? And then the rest of the space is just your plain vanilla strengthening questions. Okay, so that's one way to conceive of the relationship between these four different question types. Strengthening is the most laissez-faire. It's the most like, eh, whatever. Just as long as it makes the argument better, I don't care how much better. Just even a little bit better is fine, or all the way better is fine too, right? Or almost all the way better, that's fine too. That that all counts. That's all fine with me. Each of these three subtypes, subsets of strengthening, is more finicky, right? They're all like, eh, actually, you know, sufficient assumption. I'm pretty particular. It needs to make the argument valid, right? You got to focus on the form. PSA is the same, right? You have to focus on the form. It doesn't have to be valid, but it's got to get pretty close to valid. And the only one we haven't talked about yet is necessary assumption. It's also very particular. But in what way? Well, you might have noticed sufficiency, necessity. Right, somewhere else we also use that language of sufficiency, necessity, and that's where we talked about logic. Right? When we use this arrow, we said the thing over here was a sufficient condition. The thing over here was a necessary condition. Could it be that this is somehow related to the question stems? Yeah, definitely, right? Definitely. And the relationship has to do with the nature of the premises, the conclusion, and the assumption we're being asked to identify. Okay, so let's recall sufficient assumption, which we've already done, right? We say with a sufficient assumption, if all your premises are true, right, and then we add in the sufficient assumption answer choice, and the correct answer choice, of course, is true. Then what happens? Then the conclusion must also be true, on the basis of those premises, right? On the basis of all of this stuff, the conclusion must be true. That's a perfect argument, right? In other words, a valid argument. The terminology for perf, or what I colloquially call a perfect argument, is valid. Meaning, if the premises, if all these premises are true, the conclusion has no choice but to be true. Okay, so you see the sense in which it's sufficient. This is what's kicking this to be true. Okay, so I'll reconceptualize this later. But first, let's think about for necessary assumption. Right. So you got premise. Once again, you have an argument. Of course, you're always going to have an argument, and you know, in this type of question. So once again, you, if you identify the premise, you have to say, okay, the premises are true, of course, and then the conclusion. What conclusion?、Uh, it doesn't have to be true, right? Just like how here for sufficient assumption, the conclusion didn't have to be true until you supply the Right answer choice, sufficient assumption, and then it's like all of a sudden conclusion that well now I have no choice but to be true, right? So here the conclusion,、uh, you know, what are we doing though? We're saying if the conclusion followed from the premise, right? If the premises did actually provide support to the conclusion, then the necessary assumption has to be true as well. There's a big difference between this and this, and the difference. Is in the logical relationship between the argument and the assumption. Okay, I'll say that again. It's between the logical relationship between the argument and the assumption. In sufficient assumption, the logical relationship between the argument and assumption is that when the sufficient assumption is true, the argument becomes valid, right? When the sufficient assumption is true, the argument becomes valid. In necessary assumption questions, it's the other way around. In order for the argument to have a chance of being valid. The necessary assumptions must be true, okay? In order for the argument to have a chance of being valid, in order for the premise to support the conclusion, all of your necessary assumptions must be true. Let me explain a different way. So、uh, this time, imagine your premises once again are all true, right? This is an argument we're looking at. Once again, the premises are true. I'm only going to speak under that assumption, the assumption of the premises being true, okay? If now the sufficient assumption answer choice is true, then the conclusion must also be true. Hopefully that rings a bell. Right, that's kind of what we're doing in the、uh, sufficient assumption. You find the sufficient assumption answer choice under the condition that the premises are already true. If the sufficient assumption answer choice is true, that's it. That's enough. Right. In other words, it's sufficient for the conclusion to follow. The argument becomes valid. Necessary assumption is different. You start out by presuming the conclusion to be true, 
That's the big difference, right? That's what I meant when I said earlier up here, the logical relationship between the assumption and the argument is flipped around. Okay, so let me let me finish this here. You start out by saying, okay, all your premises are true, and let me just let me just presume that the conclusion does in fact follow from the premises, right? If that were the case, what assumptions have to be true? That's the sense in which it's necessary. You see, it's sitting on the necessary side of the arrow, of the logical arrow. Okay, whereas sufficient assumptions are really powerful. You take a sufficient assumption. If it's true, then you're done. Premise is already true. The conclusion follows. Logically, the argument is valid. Great, we're done. Necessary assumptions aren't that powerful in that sense, right? Because for necessary assumption, you're you're once again taking the premises to be true. Now you're saying, okay, instead of finding something to force my conclusion to be true, now I'm saying, let's just say that the conclusion does actually follow from the premises, right? In other words, this argument does run. In other words, this premise, the support structure actually works. If that were the case. What must be true? Totally different. Because of this difference, you can exploit a way of identifying the correct necessary assumption answer choice. Notice this logical structure. What would happen? Right. This this logical structure is like if you're a cat, then you're a mammal. Right. It's the same thing. It's just an arrow, conditional arrow. Right. This is sufficient condition. This is necessary condition. What if you fail the necessary condition? If you're a cat, then you're a mammal. What if you fail the necessary? You're not a mammal. Then what? Then you can't be a cat. And you have to fail the sufficient, right? So if the necessary assumption, in other words, were false, then what? Then the conclusion also has to be false. In other words, even when the premises are true, if your necessary assumption answer is false, your conclusion cannot follow from the premises. Your conclusion has to be false as well. This is the underlying logic. Pragmatically. I want you to take away from this the idea that you can test to see if a necessary assumption is the right answer choice by seeing what happens if you if you say, "Hey, this answer choice B, I think B might be the right necessary assumption." Answer. Let's let's see what happens if I negate B, not B, right? False. Does it force the argument? Does it force this argument to fall apart? In other words, even when the premise is true, the conclusion is no longer supported by the premise. Right? The conclusion is false. All right, we'll see that in practice in the next、uh, three questions. One other point I want to cover about necessary assumption question for the theory. Generally speaking, you're going to encounter two types of necessary assumption answers. One type is what I like to call the bridging type. The other is what I like to call the shielding or the defending type. Okay, so they're just analogies to describe how the answer choice. Relates in a different way to the argument. Okay, so the bridging type is something very similar to what you already saw in the sufficient assumption and PSA questions, right? Where you actually just build a bridge from your premise to your conclusion. Sometimes it's actually exactly the same, but sometimes it's weaker, right? Remember from sufficient assumption to PSA, this was the stronger bridge, right? This could be a bridge that you know has some weaknesses in it. Well, same thing here with just put that put NA on the same continuum. This is an even weaker bridge, right? So if if sufficient assumption is building a suspension bridge, maybe necessary assumption is just a rickety rope bridge, right? With like wooden planks. Okay, but just some kind of connection that takes you from your premise to your conclusion. That's one type of necessary assumption, right? Very similar to stuff we already saw. A different type of necessary assumption is shielding, meaning. You're just protecting the argument from falling apart, right? You're preventing it from falling apart. Not so much doing the work of the argument, taking it from the premise to the conclusion, but rather just kind of protecting the conditions under which this could still happen, right? Protecting the conditions such that the premise can still support the conclusion. And for this type of necessary assumption question, often you'll be reminded of strengthening and weakening questions that. Deal with phenomenon hypothesis framework, because in that type of question, the strengthening weakening question that utilizes phenomenon hypothesis framework, you're asked to play around with alternate hypotheses, right? And if it's weakening, you're asked to introduce alternate hypotheses. If it's strengthening, you're asked to prevent alternate hypotheses. So often, that's how you shield the argument: is that you deny alternate hypotheses. It's not the only way, 
Okay, it's not definitely not the only way, but it is one common way. All right, so let's backtrack a bit. We talked about the characteristics of a necessary assumption in how it relates to the argument. I said there are two types: bridging, which tries to connect ideas from the premise to the conclusion, and shielding, which tries to prevent the argument from falling apart. In other words, protect the conditions such that the premise still can, still has a chance of supporting the conclusion. And I know all this sounds is very abstract. Well, you know, like I said, we'll see some real questions soon enough, and you'll get a chance to apply theory to the real world, right? The real world of logical reasoning questions. Okay, so that's one way to think of the relationship between necessary assumption and the argument. Another way is purely in logic. What does it mean to be a necessary assumption, right? How is that different from a sufficient assumption? Well, for sufficient assumption, if the premises are true and the sufficient assumption is true, then the conclusion must be true. Necessary works in some ways the opposite direction, right? The premises are once again true, but this time we're taking the conclusion to follow from the premise. We're saying premises are true, and yes, let's just say the conclusion follows. Then let's see what has to be true. That's necessary assumption, which means if you were to falsify or negate the necessary assumption, and truly it is a necessary assumption, then the argument falls apart. The conclusion cannot follow from the premises anymore, and that's a really pragmatic way of identifying the right answer choice. In fact, you'll see me utilize this technique when we do the three questions that we're going to see. Okay, and lastly, to relate necessary assumption to the other question types in the subset, you can think of. All of the questions falling on this spectrum of how much to improve, how much to strengthen the argument. On the far end of the spectrum, we're making the argument perfect, in other words, valid. On the other end of the spectrum, you're just keeping it together. Don't let the argument fall apart. Necessary assumption is here. Sufficient assumption is here. PSA is somewhere in between, roughly around here, and the rest of it. Right, the rest of the space is just your strengthening. Okay, and this is all about the more to the right you go on this spectrum, the more and more you're making the argument stronger.